Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to the second movie model car review. Today I'm going to present you the famous 1974 Dodge Monaco sedan Bluesmobile of the movie The Blues Brothers, made by RC2. I'll start by telling you a little bit about the history of the car, its technical specifications, then we'll go ahead and take an in-depth look of the exterior, engine bay, undercarriage, as well as the interior, and close the review with the packaging. The third generation Dodge Monaco was sold from 1974 to 1976. It was a complete redesign compared to the previous generation with an all new unibody platform and all new sheet metal. It came with three different engines, all of them being V8s. A 360 cubic inch 5.9 liter, a 400 cubic inch 6.6 .6 liter and a 440 cubic inch 7.2 liter V8. The latter of them was the one being used in the Bluesmobile. So let's go ahead and look at the exterior of the car. For starters it has the correct black and white police livery painting which is slightly tarnished like in the movie. You have the to serve and to protect lettering here, the P1 on the back door, the star over there, then of course mandatory the police push bar in the front we go over to the front right side of the car we can even see the correct license plate of the Bluesmobile Illinois BDR 529 and on top of that on the lower part of it there is the Illinois state slogan land of Lincoln if we take a closer look at the left apron of the car we can clearly say that they put on the standard police issue searchlight here which is operated manually and should be operated by a handle that goes back inside however there's no such handle in this car but we'll talk about the inside in just a moment furthermore on the left side we have the rear view mirror and only on the left side which is accurate to how they did it in the movie because this car apparently just had one on the left side and not on the passenger side as we can see here as we go over to the back of the car we can immediately see that they dropped the second D in Dodge here just as it was in the movie that's good second part is on the license plate here you can see it is supposed to be attached by four screws, two on the top and two on the bottom. And the bigger marks here on the bottom indicate that they are only attached by the two lower screws, which is exactly how they did in the movie as well. So, nice touch. These two vertical bars here that are part of the original cars however were not on the movie car they were taken apart they, they were taken off the, uh, the movie cars just as they did here in the front we have the push bar here and then those two vertical bar bars which are part of the front bumper but they were not on the movie like not on the cars that were in the movies Another nice touch we can see in the back is the fact that you can open the trunk. So what do we find inside? We find Elwood's handbag, which is a nice touch. Elwood carried his handbag with him throughout the entire movie. This one is made out of slightly soft plastic and is attached to the floor of the trunk. So I suppose the only way of disconnecting it would be to disassemble the car and to unbolt it from underneath. As we go around the car once again, but this time to the passenger side, we can see that they even thought of putting on the radio antenna. And just some nice details such as the running lights in the front, in the back, and, and the door handles and the lock. You can just see that contrary to the General Lee I reviewed a week ago, 
In this one, they're actually part of the doors or of the, of the body. They're part of the mold. And the door handle gray and the, the orange in the front of the running lights and the red in the back are just painted on. But it's a really nice and solid work. And overall, I just must say that they really kept the spirit of the Bluesmobile alive by giving it this kind of dirt paint on it. You can see it all over the car actually, more so on the front of course, where they sprayed this kind of dirt all over the car. You can see it on the wheels as well, going all the way back on the windows, windscreen. So it's not just that the, the body is old and tarnished, but they actually sprayed this kind of dirt paint on it to make it look more real. The windscreen wipers are nicely hidden behind the hood of the car, at least the one on the driver's side. The fit and finish is just so much better than on the Charger RT I reviewed previously. And then, looking at the dashboard, you can't miss all of the garbage imitations they replicated. Cigarettes, pack of cigarettes, crushed coke cans, and so on. The attention to details just shows how much respect RC2 had with regards to the Blues Brother franchise. Now, let's take a look under the car. I'm pleased to note that the same attention to details has been carried on underneath the car. First off, the entire undercarriage is covered with the same coat of dirt as the rest of the car. The different elements of the engine, oil pan, steering, exhaust system and suspensions have been molded and painted with precision. We can see the screws that attach the chassis to the body. Two in the front, four in the middle and two in the back. Evidently, the four big holes in the middle are the mountings for the stand in the box. But we'll get to that towards the end. Another valuable detail is the fact that this car is an official licensed product of the Chrysler Corporation, Universal Studios and the Blues Brothers Movie Merchandising Department. So now it's time to take a look under the hood. At first glance I'm happy to announce that the dirt cover story continues in here. As mentioned in the introduction, this car is equipped with the 440 cubic inch V8 and is producing a total of 280 horsepower. It's just beautiful to see how much attention they've paid to details. Every part of it is clearly visible and painted accordingly. Air filter, the blue valve covers, the power steering, the alternator, and what appears to be the cooling fluid container, and even the clamps of the battery plugs are visible. Moreover, the solid metal hood has been given the actual shape on the interior as well and it closes nicely and fits perfectly. So I assume I can quote Elvis Blues to some of the mechanical part of this car. It's got a cup motor, a 440 cubic inch plant, it's got cup tires, cup suspension, cup shocks. It's a model made before catalytic converters so it'll run good on regular gas. Before we check out the interior, you might have wondered why there are these four holes on the roof and those little two ones in the back. This is of course because no Bluesmobile comes complete without the Bluesmobile loudspeaker they put on the roof in the movie. Obviously, the loudspeaker and the frame are both made of plastic, but once again, they put it on a very nice paint job. It could have been painted in a slightly lighter gray to match better the actual one of the movie, but it's very well made nevertheless. And so is the frame holding the loudspeaker. I especially like the slightly elastic ropes that attach the frame to the car. And this is how it's done. Just put it on, like so. Just as in the movie, the ropes are mounted to the push bar. Like so. And in the back, just behind the rear window. Slide them in. There we are. So let's go ahead and check out the interior of the car. First of all, the quality of the steering wheel, the instruments and dashboard is very good. Everything from the indicator and gear lever to the gauges and the police radio in the lower center is there. They integrated the accelerator and brake pedals, as well as the parking brake on the far left. 
Although it looks very upscale to have a black-brown steering wheel and a black steering column in contrast to the rest of the dashboard, the actual car had a complete brown interior. As mentioned in the beginning, the handle of the searchlight mounted on the left side A-pillar is missing. Only the insert place is visible from the inside. The seat belts, however, are missing too. Not that the Blues Brothers would have ever used them, because remember their slogan, they were on a mission from God. If we look up, we can see the interior rearview mirror and the sun shades, but there is no headline. But it would have to be the absolute deluxe version for it to be in. The seats are correct as well. One seat bench including the headrests in the front and one in the back. The door trims match the one of the real size car, all beige with the chrome window handle. I like the fact that the windows are rolled down in the front, probably because the blue spotters always reach out their arms to indicate a turn, rather than switching on the turn signal. So let's shut the doors and take a look at the packaging. So here we have the packaging of the car. It comes in this brick scheme imitation. The Blues Brothers on the front, of course, the Blues Mobile here with the loudspeaker on the roof. On the back, we have the inscription in English and in French with some screenshots of the movie and some windows on the side. Inside we have this rather special second mini packaging which is there to put the loudspeaker in. So I'm just gonna demonstrate this here. Take the loudspeaker off the car. Back in, just make sure not to cut the ropes. There we go. Once again, just put the loudspeaker in the transparent box, put the Bluesmobile in the box first, and then the loudspeaker on the hood of the car, and the package is complete. Thanks so much for watching the in-depth review of the 1974 Dodge Monaco sedan Bluesmobile. Please feel free to comment, like, share and subscribe, as well as visit my Facebook page and my blog on motoscotty.com. Stay tuned, until next time!